Today I'm going to learn how to use Geometry Proximity, one of the most useful nodes in Geometry Node. So let's see how it works. There's the camera, the light, go to Geometry Node. I'm going to hide this panel and this one. And let's create a new profile, delete this, press Shift A and add a grid, because it will be easier to understand. So let's connect it here, make it bigger, and I want to convert it in a lot of cubes. So we need to use instance on points. And we want to use as instance cubes. Let's make them smaller, something like 0 0.3. And let's add more cubes. So we need to add more vertices, something like that. Perfect. Now I'm going to make this more contrast. So I'm going to go here and select cavity. So we see better these lines. I want to animate, for example, these instance, these cubes with the scale. I want to change them, but I want they change based in the distance of another object. So first of all, let's add another object, for example, an ecosphere. And now I need the information of this object to use it with this geometry node. By the way, if you don't want to lose this panel when you select another object, what you have to do once you have this panel is click here. So now when I select this object, I don't lose this panel. Okay, we need this object info here. So we can use object info. And now select this object. We have two ways. You can click here, or if not, click here and select the object. Now with this object, we want to get the distance, the proximity in relation with this object, the grid, because we're inside this geometry node. So to do this, what we need is a node called geometry proximity. And to use this node, we need to connect it here, geometry with geometry. So this node is getting the distance, the proximity of this object, the object we connected, in relation with the object it's inside, so this grid. And with this, we can get the position and the distance. Most of the time, we're going to use distance. And with this distance, we can change something. For example, the scale, because we want to animate the scale. So now, if I get the distance and I connect it here, every instance is going to change the scale based in the proximity of this object. But before we continue, if we try to move this, you can see nothing changed. I mean, this is working, but it's not working in real time. Why? Because we have selected original. That means that it's remembering the original position when the object was created. So here, if you want the instance to react in real time to the position of this object, you need to select relative. So now when we move this, you can see it's reacting in real time. However, this is not working perfectly, as you can notice. So to fix this, always after this node, we have to use map range. And if you add it here, this map range solves this problem. So always when you use this, remember to use this one. It's the perfect teamwork, the perfect couple. So how this works? I'm going to make the icosphere smaller. To understand how this works, we need to select this node and press Ctrl Shift left click. And now we have the viewer node. With the viewer node, we can see the mask, how this is working, so we can understand better this node. To see the mask, we need to select in geometry where we want to see the mask. So we want to see it in the grid. So let's connect it green with green. And now we can see this mask of white and black gray colors. You can see when it gets closer, the mask starts appearing. And closer, closer it gets to the position, more black is. So this, what you see, is the range. So now, if I leave it like that, and we disable this, nothing changed. But if I move this, it starts reacting here, as you can see. Let's check it, because the mask starts appearing. Look, closer, you can see more black. If I make it far away, it's pure white. OK, so we can see that something is changing and we have a range. So how we control this range? To control this range is these two first values. So these two first values is the range. Now, if we increase this, if you leave this like zero and we increase this, look, you can see the mask is expanding. So now we have a bigger range. 
So that means if we come back here, we have a bigger range of reaction. And if you want to make this range more contrast, because now we have this transition from poor white and poor black, this is a transition. If you want to make it shorter, then we need to make this number closer to this number. So more distance have this number from this number, bigger is the transition, bigger is the mask, as you can see. But if we make this shorter, for example, now more or less it's here, and I want this here, and it increases this. So now I'm making this zone poor black, and this is a transition between poor white and poor black. So what does it mean this? Let's check it. That means we have this effect now. Don't worry, I'm going to explain you. I want you to understand that these two values is to control the range. And remember, higher the difference between these two values, longer the transition we have. But also you can invert this. Oh, you can invert this mask when we make this number greater than this number. So if I make it greater than 5.3, look, we invert the mask. And now we get the opposite. Let's make this smaller so you will understand it. So before it was like that. This is smaller, so we have black and outside white. If I make it equal or bigger, let's make it bigger so it's easier to understand. Now it's the invert. And here we have cubes and here no. Okay, so now you know how to do this effect. And if I want to make this transition longer, then I'm going to, for example, increase this. Why? Because I'm increasing the distance between this value and this one. I know it's a bit confusing, but once you start playing, you will get how it works. And remember always to use this because it will be easier to understand. And this, what is this? These ones are the values when it's inside and outside of the ring. So this is the values of the scale because we are playing with a scale, remember. So to make it easier, I'm going to make more contrast this selection, something like 1.8. Now what I'm saying is the maximum scale of the instance is 1. So if I want to increase this, I have to increase this number. Or I can say, no, I want to make it smaller. And this 1, 0 is the minimum scale outside when it's black. So now we don't see any instance here because the scale is 0. So if something has 0 scale, we cannot see it. But if I want to see the cubes here a little bit, I have to increase this. So this is the scale of outside of the ring, of the range. If I want to increase this scale, then I'm going to increase this number. And now I can make this one, the ones that are inside, lower. I know it can be confusing, but when you start playing, you will understand it. Now I'm going to make your question. Looking at this, which part do you think is white? Which part do you think is black? This one is white. And this one is black. Let's check it. As you can see, actually, well, it's not poor black, but you get it there, right? Why is it not black? Because it's not zero. If we increase this closer to one, it's white. When it's zero, it's black. If you increase this, then it's gray. But what I want to say is that seeing the scale, you can notice more or less which one is closer to white and which one is closer to black. So don't think that always this is black and this is white. Just look at here or just click here and you will understand how it works. So basically, I know it's a bit confusing. I hope you understand it. But with this, you can change the range and say, for example, let's start again. And now, for example, if I want to increase this, what I will do is increase this one. And if I want to delete more, I will increase this. And now when I move this, I can delete all these cubes. If I want the cubes outside bigger, then I increase this. If I want it smaller, I can make it smaller. If I want the opposite, then I'm going to select, for example, 2. And here, 0. If I want to make this the transition smoother, then I'm going to play with these two values to increase the difference. So I'm going to make this one smaller 
and something like that, for example, and you can increase it or decrease it. If you want to see another example, let's delete this and this, and let's add extrude. So now we are extruding all the faces with one value. This is the value, but what we can do is to use the map range, the geometry proximity, to change the scale of the extrude based in the proximity. And with this, we control the same. So now, if we don't click anything, actually I'm going to leave this zero. So the maximum value will be when it's really close to this. Remember, this is really important. Let's move it. And after we move away from this point, it will start decreasing. So always, it's when it's really close to this point. Not this point, the point of every face, as you can see. If I want to increase this, then what I have to do is go here and say, I want more. If I want a bit here, then I can click here. If I want to make this shorter, then I need to make this shorter and something, for example, like this. So now when I move this, I have this effect. I can make it bigger. Smaller, not so big. So you see how it works, right? What I can do also is to make this closer here without moving this. So I'm going to increase this scale. And now when I move this, I have this effect. So you can use the geometry proximity with any value you want to animate. And remember always to use the viewer node to understand how this works. So it will be easier to play with this mask and make it bigger, shorter, etc. Don't worry, I will do more tutorials about this. This one is just to get the basics of geometry proximity and map range. And in the future tutorials, we're going to see more uses of these nodes. If you like this video, give a like. And if you want to learn more, subscribe and see you in the next video.